Hi friends, it's Elizabeth here at ECHO. Thank you for joining me today for Science and Stories. I like to start Science and Stories with a song. Some of you know it, so sing with me if you can. It starts like this. Hello to everyone, and how are you today? We've come to our story time to laugh and sing and play. And when you're up, you're up. Can you put your hands way up high? And when we're down, we're down. And then when we're only halfway up, we're neither up nor down. So roll your hands so slow, make them go slow. And then roll your hands so fast, as fast as you can. And give your hands a clap, 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 and lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Good job. I also brought my science bag. I bring that with me every time and there's always something different inside. Let's investigate. I wonder what's inside today. We can investigate and ask questions and use all of our senses like scientists do to find out more. So let's do that. We can use our senses, we can use our eyes to see, we can use our ears to hear, our nose to smell and our mouth to taste and then we can use our fingers to touch and then we'll learn so much. Are you ready? Okay, let's use our eyes and take a look. You can tell how big it is. It doesn't fill up my whole bag, only the bottom. And you can kind of see what shape it is too, right? All right, let's use our ears. Does it make a sound? Can you hear anything? Hmm, I don't hear anything. What if I knock on it? Listen close. Did you hear that? It sounds hard. It is hard. You can borrow my fingers since you can't touch it. Yep, it's hard all right. How about we smell it? I'll let you borrow my nose too. Nope, I don't smell anything. It doesn't smell. I don't think we should taste it. Sometimes it's just not right to taste something. I think this is one of those times. But you can use your eyes to watch and see if it's heavy or light. Are you wondering about that? I know because I'm holding it. But if you use your eyes while I throw it up into the air, maybe you can notice how heavy it comes back down into my hands. Are you ready? One, two, three. Oh, it came down with a little bit of a thud, but it's not too heavy, right? Not like a brick, but heavier than a feather. Do you have an idea of what this might be now that we've investigated with all of our senses? Make a guess, make a prediction of what I'm gonna pull out of the bag. Go ahead, you can say it out loud or you can keep it in your head. All right, did you make a prediction? Did you make a best guess? Let's pull it out and see what we have. Count with me, are you ready? One, two, three, <gasps> ta-da! What is this? It's empty. I wish it was full because inside there's usually, yes, maple syrup. I love maple syrup. Do you love maple syrup? Do you like it on pancakes? Maybe on waffles? It's so good. Do you know this time of year is the time for making maple syrup? How do you do that? How do you make maple syrup? Do you know the answer to that question? I'm really curious. You know, when scientists have questions, sometimes they do research to find out more. And I brought a book so we can do some research and find out more about maple syrup. Here's the book. Have you read this one? Sugaring by Jesse Haas. Let's do some research. How's maple sugar or how's maple syrup made? That's our question today. Let's look inside. Oh, 
Ah, oh, it starts here. Gramp and Nora. This must be Gramp, and that must be Nora. What are they doing? Gramp and Nora are gathering sap out of the trees. What does sap have to do with maple syrup? Cold nights and sunny days. That's sugaring weather, says Gramp. Hey, we're having cold nights and sunny days now in Vermont. It must be sugaring weather. Four buckets hang on, big, on the big maple tree. Gramp takes a bucket down and pours the sap into Nora's pail. When he hangs the bucket back on the tree, sap drips into the bucket. Tap. Gramp empties more buckets into his pails. Tap, 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 goes the sap. Come up, Gramp tells the horses, and they pull the big tank closer. Their hooves sink deep in the snow. Their breath makes a cloud. Sweat rolls from under Bonnie's collar and down Stella's nose. Whoa, Gramp says. He pours the sap into the tank. One pail, two Gramp waits while Nora drinks from the third pail, and he drinks too. Sap tastes good, like cold, sweet water. Can I give Bonnie and Stella a drink? Nora asks. They're working so hard. Not from the pail, Gramp says. They'll want to stop at every tree. I need them to stop where I say. Nora cups her hand. She dips some sap from the pail, and she hurries to Bonnie and Stella. The sap drips out through her fingers. Bonnie and Stella lick and their big pink, with their big pink tongues, but they only get a tiny taste. It's hard to give sap to a horse, Gramp says. Never mind, they'll get plenty of hay for lunch. But they get hay all the time, Nora says. Sap is special. When the sap is all gathered, Gramp drains it into a holding tank. After lunch, he starts a fire in the sugar house. Sap from the holding tank flows into a long pail, and the sap begins to boil. Gramp tells Nora horse stories. They feed the fire and sing songs, and slowly the sap at the end of the pan starts to turn brown. When it's almost dark out, Gramp goes to get more wood. He gives Nora a tin cup of cream. You know what to do, he says. I'll be right back. Nora stands on a heavy stump, high enough to see inside the pan. She watches the brown bubbles. Are they getting higher? All at once, the bubbles lift. They almost boil over the top of the pan. But Nora is ready. She dips her fingers into the cream and she flicks a tiny drop onto the bubbles. With a sigh and a whoosh, the bubbles back down. The horse's hoof crunched the snow. Gramp drives them close to the sugar house. Whoa, he says, and hurries inside. It boiled up, Nora says. It's almost ready, Gramp says. He dips his scoop into the pan and holds it up to watch the drips. The horses puff outside the door. Couple more minutes. He dips and watches, dips and watches until the syrup slides off the scoop in one smooth sheet. All right, Gramp says. He opens a faucet on the side of the pan. Thick brown syrup pours into a kettle. At the other end of the pan, clear new sap flows in to replace it. Gramp shuts off the faucet he puts some syrup in a glass and sets it, sets it in the snow to cool. Nora can hardly wait to taste it. Maple syrup is even more special than sap. When the syrup is cool enough, Gramp and Nora drink some. It's so sweet, they can only take little sips. Oh, that's good, Gramp says. Bonnie and Stella watch through the door. Bonnie and Stella should get a taste, Nora says. They brought the sap in. They brought the wood. She pours some syrup into her hand. It's warm and sticky, and it dribbles through her fingers. Nora holds her hand out to Bonnie. Careful, Gramp says. Bonnie licks and licks. She thinks maple syrup is special, too. Suddenly, Nora feels Bonnie's teeth. Ow! She pulls her hand away. Okay, Gramp says. Nora nods. 
Your hand was so sweet, she thought it was candy. Stella points her ears. She wants syrup, too, but Nora's afraid to give her any. Tell you what, Graham says. Take this kettle of syrup to Graham and tell her we want something to give a horse. She'll know what you mean. Graham, put, Graham puts the syrup on the stove, but she won't tell Nora what she's making. It'll be a surprise for you and the horses, she says. So Nora takes supper down to Graham, and they keep on boiling long past Nora's bedtime. When they come back, the kettle of syrup is gone, and the kitchen smells sweet and mapley. Next morning after breakfast, Graham brings a brownie pan from the pantry. Don't look yet. She cuts something into squares, and she gives Nora a square. Maple sugar, Nora says. We don't make it often, Graham says. Maple sugar is special. But so are horses, said Nora. She bites off a piece, and it tastes so good, it makes the back corners of her mouth water. She takes two more squares from the pan. Take one for Gramp, too, Graham says. Bonnie and Stella are hitched to the sled. They point their ears at Nora. Nora holds her hands flat so her fingers are out of the way. Bonnie and Stella's whiskers tickle, and their breath goes whoosh. Their long lips fumble up the sugar. Crunch, crunch, crunch. They nod their heads as they chew. Happy now, Gramp says. Yes, says Nora. She climbs up beside him. Gramp gives her the reins, and she gives him his piece of maple sugar. Then they drive out to the woods to get more sap. The end. So you have to gather sap from the maple trees to make maple syrup. And it takes a long time to make maple syrup out of the sap, but it's worth it. It's so good. I made a picture I want to share with you. It looks like this. I'm pretending like this is a maple tree. It doesn't have any leaves right now. It's just standing all sticks and bones in the woods. Can you tell how I made my maple tree? You might want to do it at home too. You could trace your hand on a piece of paper and cut it out and paste it onto another. The story told us that you need warm days and cold nights. So I put a warm sun in my picture, but snow still on the ground. What's missing? If this is a maple tree and we're going to gather sap, we need to add a bucket. I'm going to use this piece of tin foil to make my bucket. Hold your thumb up, put your tin foil on, wrap it around, and squeeze. Let's see if we can make this look like a bucket. Get my thumb out. Kind of fold down the tops of the bucket. Like that. And then make the bottom of the bucket flat. Like that. What do you think? Will that work? Does that look sort of like the buckets in the book? And then we could tape it right onto our tree. And that can be our bucket for collecting sap. We have to gather lots of buckets of sap to make one gallon of syrup. Maybe 30 of these to make one bucket of syrup. But it's worth it. Enjoy, friends. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.